So let's do an example of a TP. You set up a TP on the ground. So there's this joint at the top where the legs of the TP slide apart. Um, and then they'll slide along the ground. We know there's ground here and it goes all straight. Um, so let's say this end of the TP is fixed. And as this vector moves like that, this one will move and that bottom thing stretches. So we're gonna say that the way the TP opens is like this. We need to assign a coordinate frame, write a vector loop, write the equations, identify knowns, unknowns, constraints, and then we'll put this into MATLAB and write a function for the algebraic solution and then write a script to run the simulation. What kinds of joints are we gonna have? Okay, this one's, this one's kind of tricky. So we say there's a revolute down here because the angle of this link changes. And then we put a prismatic joint that's in between these two revolutes to show how they slide apart. If you think about like the angle of the two legs is gonna change. They're gonna flatten like that. Um, but the bottoms slide apart. So this is how we can represent it schematically and still get the same functionality. Um, because if we wanted to go the hard route, we could say that this joint was like a, a point contact, make it a higher pair, so it could slide and roll at the same time, like that kind of deal. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna pretend that there's just a prismatic joint in between two revolute joints that's making them slide apart because it ends up with the same functionality and it's a lot easier for the math. First, assign a coordinate frame. So since this point right here is the fixed point, that's where we'll put our coordinate frame. X goes along the ground, Y goes up. And then we need to put on some vectors. So let's say R1, R2, R3, and then some angles in here, theta two, theta three, just for illustrations. Then we need to write this vector loop. So let's go this way around the loop, because we go start at the origin, go along R1, go along R3, go against R2. So that's how those signs come out. Um, so sometimes we write them in just in numerical order um, to help remember. So we'll just have R1 minus R2 plus R3 equals zero. And these are both exactly correct. Now we need to break these into scalar components. So Let's get the X and the Y. Let's, what do you have for X? For X, I have R1, C1 plus R3, C3 minus R2, C2 equals zero. Um, and we can get rid of that C1. Very good. And then how about for Y? Um, R1, S1 plus R2. 3s3 minus r2s2 and same we can get rid of the sine one as well okay very good oh yeah plus the okay. all right now can anybody see a constraint equation how th there are two angles on here that we can relate to each other just from sort of symmetry of how this moves so can anyone figure out what that constraint equation would be so we'll have theta 2 plus theta three equals 180 degrees. 
looking at this, you'll know like when it's all the way vertical, then theta two and theta three are 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. When it's all the way flat, theta two is zero, theta three is 180. That still makes up to 180. So as it moves in between, this theta two gets smaller, theta three gets bigger. What is constant the whole time and what is going to change? Because our two and our three, the legs of the TP, they're not gonna change size, so those are known. And then theta one goes along the ground. So that is also a known. Now, how about the unknowns? Yes, R1, theta two, theta three, everything that changes. In our constraints, could we add uh, R2 equals R3 or would that matter? Okay, since R2 and R3 are both known, then we don't use a constraint to relate those. Oh, okay. If it's an unknown, then we use a constraint because we'd have to solve for one or the other of those things. But if we know both of them, then we don't need the constraint equation just because it wouldn't help with anything. Now we need to choose an input. Now actually, shoot, we didn't calculate links, joints, degrees of freedom, all that. So let's figure out how many links, how many joints. There's one loop, so that's kind of obvious there, but, um, and then degrees of freedom. R1 has two links, one on the left side of the slider joint and one on the right side. So because that's, there's a slider joint here, we calculate that, like we account for it as having one link on the left and one link on the right. Same thing like if it was a cylinder with a piston going in and out, it acts exactly the same as that. So that's how we know to count it as two links. Okay, and since it's on the ground, we don't count an extra ground link then? Right, so we'll basically we can say, okay, the, the one on the left side is the ground and then the one on the right side slides away from it. Okay. So it, it almost is like, like that is how the links are. And how many degrees of freedom does this system have? Yes, one degree of freedom. And here, because there's no motor, then like, again, this is a mechanism and not a machine. So we kind of get to choose. The easiest one for the input, let's see, DOF equals one, same as M. And the easiest one for that, we're going to go with theta two, um, because this is what's going to make the math the easiest to solve. So we could choose any of these to be the input, but we're gonna go with theta two because that will make our math the easiest. So now we need to work out the algebraic solution to these position equations. Our unknowns are gonna be R1 and theta three. So we need to solve out for theta three and R1 in terms of everything else. We actually have three equations here because we have a constraint, we have an X and a Y. So we'll only end up needing to use two of these. Let's see, how could we solve these out? So theta two and theta three equals 180 degrees. This equation just has one unknown now, theta three. So we can solve this one for theta three. So this will give us one of our unknowns. And then the other unknown is R1. We can get R1 from this X equation. So, now we just have to make sure that when we solve this and put, when we put this into the code, we do the, the theta three equation first because theta three is used in the equation for R1. So we have to solve that one first before we can solve for R1. Let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back and program this into MATLAB. 